episode 72 of this and that and what of accounts and in this one I will talk about energy, Germany, NATO and Russia and uh, I've got a few images just to share. I received an email from a subscriber and the guy made valid points and I have to present my unconditional apology for the fact that I have a tendency to allow my emotions to get in the way and being a boor <laughs> when things go wrong I'm a guy that can use fuck like commas and dashes and I will definitely pay attention to that and make sure that I don't let it get out of hand because that serves no purpose. It only gives me a temporary relief, but it doesn't serve any purpose. I've seen so many things the past few days that has confirmed to me that the brainwashing of the populations, especially in the West, has been done very well. It was planned well, it was executed well. And due to the fact that people differ, a large proportion of the population has been so brainwashed that they cannot imagine the possibility that they may be wrong. Fortunately, I'm not one of those guys. I'm a guy that like to think that I am a fairly objective observer. And it is important for me to focus on that. We saw it during the pestilence when they started with their stories and how a large proportion of the population just fell into line and held their arms out. And I saw some snippet yesterday and I forgot to screenshot it but where a psychologist talked about the uh, role of mass hypnosis and uh, he said that 30% of people are very easy to hypnotize and once it's done it's there and then there's 40% of the population that tends to resist a bit but slowly but surely they swing over to those that have been totally hypnotized and then there's 30% of the population that you cannot keep and he made the statement that those 30% they are the so-called anti-vaxxers and the rebels now to me it's quite obvious that I fall into that 30% I was totally brainwashed totally as a young man about the red danger or as they say in Afrikaans the Roy Gefaar and uh, that stuck deep and in March when I was pointed to the Donbass by a journalist I was stunned when I started looking at what's happening there and as I said many times at that stage I didn't even know that there was a place like the Donbass but now I take a lot of heat from people that call me a Russian sympathizer and I'm driving a Putin sect here in Elspreet and things like that I don't, I don't care about things like that. My dad taught me sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can never. And that's where I stick. So, uh, I will take care of my language and when I let it up, you must excuse me. I'm going to start off this with a map. And this map indicates the existence of nuclear power stations around the world. And if you look at that, it's quite interesting. And then we get to this absolute disaster that is awaiting the Europeans. Look at this map. All those red dots, those are tankers. And uh, that is in the waters around Europe. And then you look at that graphic in the left hand bottom corner. Look at that. Inside that red circle, red demarcated area is the only LNG offload facilities for Europe. Now you don't need to be a whiskey to understand 
that it's impossible to feed Europe with LNG by tankers. But the European population allowed that cabal in Brussels to take them on this trip. And then there's this piece. Qatar Energy Minister warns EU against weaning off Russian gas. Qatar's Energy Minister has warned European countries they will face an event worse energy crisis next winter without Russian gas, as his country, which is among the world's top gas exporters, has refused to divert gas flows from Asia to Europe. And the Europeans need to take note of this. The Americans caught them in a trap and the Europeans are going to pay with their actual existence for that. They better open their eyes. You look at this from Germany and I am absolutely shocked about what happened in Germany. To me, my whole life, I had great respect for the German industries and German technology. And uh, look at this, what has happened in the past few days. Textile supplier for vehicles, burgers, SE and Co. filed for bankruptcy after 156 years in business. One of the largest soap manufacturers in Europe, Kapus, declares bankruptcy, being in operation since 1848. Bodetta Suwaren GmbH, H, confectionery, founded in 1892, filed for bankruptcy. Construction company Wolf Hoch and engineer Bau filed for bankruptcy after 125 years due to the bottlenecks in personnel and material. Bakery chain Tolman Brot, founded in 1937, declares bankruptcy. Electricity blackout fries computer servers at kitchen designer Ein Baukuchen Solutions. This forced the 60-year-old company into bankruptcy. Now, look at that and think about it. And think about the people that has lost their jobs now. And then you think about what is going to disappear from the market. It is absolutely horrendous. And I cannot believe that that one woman, Ursula von der Crazy, managed to destroy the German industrial base. Then this is from the Sirius report. Never in history have the masses been vocal about an empire which is in its final days. They won't know until the final hammer falls. This time, this is despite there being numerous warning signs we've been seeing for years, but more so since early 2020. And I agree with him, and I have said it many times, the Western Empire is at the end of its days. And then we get to the green stuff. In the dinosaur age during the Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous periods, atmospheric CO2 was 10 times higher than today, enabling dinosaurs flourish due to massive plant life enabled by CO2. More CO2 is more food for humanity. The end of famine. What's not to like? And then there's this... Uh, map. Look at it, think about it. These green terrorists are out to destroy our lives and we will have to realize that there's going to come a morning that we'll have to settle up and go and face them. And then there's this image just for you to think about. Look at that bridge base 1942 and then in 2019 and then the green terrorists want to tell us the sea levels are rising. This one made me laugh. You can look at it and just smile. We found a vegan slaughterhouse. And look at all those poor watermelons being slaughtered. And then we get to NATO. And I must say, in the past six, seven months, I have developed a great aversion. The West in general, and NATO specific. US NATO support for Nazis in Ukraine is basically a repetition of previous policies. In Nicaragua they aided right-wing contrasts. 
in Afghanistan before 9-11, they backed Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. In Iran, they funded the MEK terrorist cult, while in Syria, they supported ISIS and Al-Qaeda. And this is what the holier-than-thou NATO is doing. And then there's this little bit of sanity. NATO is supplying heavy weapons to Ukraine. Iran supplying drones to Russia. Other countries may supply military equipment to Russia. If NATO can, why not Iran and other countries? And I have asked that question already. Where does the West get this arrogant idea that they can pump Ukraine full of weapons and if any other country sells weapons to Russia, that country must be sanctioned into oblivion. The West better wake up. Their time is running out fast. The rest of the world has had enough of the West. And then we get to the racism thing, and this time in America, black people are 13% of the US. The NBA is 73% black. The NFL is 60% black. Wondering if AP Sports considers this a problem that needs fixing. And that was after AP Sports published this. The NHL's first internal demographic study found its workforce to be overwhelming white. Kim Davis, NHL EVP of Social Impact Growth and Legislative Affairs, says seeing the numbers is a first step towards fixing the problem. Everywhere, white people are the problem. Even in America, where they are the vast majority, they are the problem. White people better wake up. And then we get to Russia and this post from Lavrov. It makes no sense to maintain our presence in Western countries. Our people are working in conditions that can hardly be called human. There is no work there since Europe decided to fence itself off from us and terminate economic cooperation with us. Now, I included this just to highlight the dangerous water the West is going into. I cannot understand that somewhere in that shit house in Washington, somebody thought that it would be a clever plan to isolate the West from Russia. The West is going to pay dearly. Imagine a severe disaster happens anywhere in Europe. How the hell is the Europeans going to communicate with Russia. And then there's this disturbing thing. Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Russia is willing to provide food and fertilizer so as not to jeopardize food security, but the United States blocks it. And we know it is the truth. We've heard many American politicians stating this and how they will sanction countries that buy from Russia and they threaten countries and things like that. And I just want to make a note uh, that last vote in the UN, of which the West tried to convince us that the whole world is against Russia, which didn't turn out like that, the Madagascar representative voted for that resolution and the Madagascar president fired him yesterday. And then there is this, and if you are a decent person with good moral values, you have to listen at this and decide for yourself who is right. A draft to ban LGBT propaganda and pedophilia in the Russian Federation, including in the media, books, the internet, advertising and cinema, has been submitted to the State Duma. Look at that and think. I have said it previously. It will be actually ironic if it turns out that Russia becomes the final custodian of good Western values. And then we're going to the UK. It's over. Liz Truss is resigning and will become the shortest serving Prime Minister in British history. What an absolute shambles. Now, I have said that yesterday on a discussion in Twitter where Piers Morgan made a more of a post and I responded to him and said to him, 
The UK's biggest problem is that you have no leadership and secondly, the UK are going to be colonised. The troops are already on the British soil, millions of them, and the British allowed them in. And then there's this little bit of internet wisdom. Airbnb, perfect for short stays, and it shows Downing Street number 10. And then I get this from this black in the empire. I like this guy a lot. The UK Prime Ministers Boris Johnson and Liz Truss are both gone before Putin. So is Draghi in Italy. Macron lost his majority in France and Biden is about to at least lose their house in the US. When they called for regime change, they must have meant for themselves. And I find that quite interesting and ironic. And then there's this meme that you can look at and just smile. Liz Truss. Putin must go. Putin, who must go? And look at that faces. Reality eats home. Now the following is extremely disturbing. This is what Biden said in one of his mumbling speeches. We are the United States and we do what we want. How arrogant is that? And then there's a response to it. Did he really say that? Oh well, no wonder even his best ally, Saudi Arabia, wants nothing to do with him or the states. The rest of the world should unite to decimate the US for such ignorance. And I don't think the Americans really understand the hatred in the rest of the world towards the West. Hatred. Hatred. Pure hatred. Because if you go and look what the West has done to the rest of the world, it is absolutely Horrendous. And then there's this, economist Michael Hudson, Western unity is the US telling other countries, do what we tell you to. We can bomb you if you don't do what we say. And isn't that the truth? We must. We can no longer ignore that. And then we get to something that is really very close to me, and that is in Yemen. Look at this. Look at this picture. UN Assistant General Secretary for Humanitarian Affairs Joyce Basua has highlighted the dire situation facing Yemeni children with 2.2 million under fives underfed, 500,000 severely malnourished and some 1.3 million pregnant or breastfeeding women severely mal malnourished. Listen, look at this picture. You can stop the video and read that whole story. But this is what NATO and Saudi Arabia, France, England and America is doing to the Yemeni people. And where is the outcry? Where are those guys that are so actively posting nonsense about Russia on Twitter and in social media? Where are they? Do they know what the hell their countries are doing to these people? Eight years the Yemeni has, people has been blocked from getting medicine, from getting food. And in the meantime, that evil coalition is stealing their oil and gas. But I have a funny feeling this is going to come to an end very abruptly. And then this one. South Africa wants to build electric cars using 128 billion rand of the renewable funding. There was a lot of funding that was given to South Africa to transform our energy system. But the, that transformation just means fuck our energy system up. That is what it is. For a lot of money. Now they want to build electric cars. Are these guys stupid? Don't they think that we can see what they're doing? That's just a clever plan to steal the 128 billion rand. That is what it is. Same thing as with that land that they set up for the jabs. A lot of money, COVID money went into that. And where's that land? Gone. And where's the money? Gone. And the following, I want you to take a look at it. And I am disgusted. City of Cape, uh, Cape Town unveils rainbow pedestrian crossing, a first for the city. Cape Town Mayor Gordon Hill Lewis and Mayoral Committee member for urban mobility Rob Quintos on the rainbow pedestrian crossing. What the hell is wrong with these people? These 
sexual problems and disturbances and gender illness is not acceptable to decent people. But they ram it down our throats. And this DA, I don't trust that operation. Nothing. I trust them. Nothing. They make, they make noises on their platforms. But you go and look at the practice. Look at this bloody crossing. What does that tell you? They support this rubbish. Then, with the neutral gender toilets that they want to push into the schools. What the hell is that? Last night my wife asked me, how is it possible that people are talking about sexual orientation to six-year-old children? I just shook my head and I said to her, the world has gone crazy. But look at this. South Africa is mainly a conservative country. But look at this rubbish. And it is no longer a mystery that the DA has received a hell of a lot of funding from the WEF. And from Bill Gates. I don't trust them at all. I want nothing to do with it. I gave them my vote once. That was that. Never again. I don't care how well they can administer and what. I don't care. They are rotten to the core. And then Cabana Alfred. White South Africans love South Africa. Let them not be put down because of how they were born. Millions of white people did not create what happened in the past. Sadly, South Africa is the only country in the world where the majority is intimidated by the minority. And that is so true. And it links to that article that I have showed previously. All those laws to protect 96% of the population against 4%. All those laws are doing is it confirms that that 96% is weak. And this is something that South Africans will understand. Om na by jou ouwers te woon, is a life hack. Die kind heil en jy weet nie wat om te doen nie, jou ouwers weet. Dis jy moeg van die werk en jy wil een breek hee, jou ouwers is daar om te help. Het jy letterlik enig iets nodig, jou ouwers is daar om te help. Ouwers is goud. En dis gepost dier Doc op Twitter. En dan sal hy, there is that family photograph of a family gathering. And this is very true. But it is lost in many societies, these things. I cannot understand that people do not realize that the high percentage of black families where the children are growing up without a father, how bad that is. And then we get to that what a fuck moment. And this is a real tongue in the cheek, what a fuck. German researchers and studies found that if women sleep long hours, it reduces brain strokes, blood pressure, diabetes, and heart attacks in men. Now, on that note, chauvinistic maybe, have a great day. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and share the thing. And if you have any comments, please make the comments. Let me know what you like. Have a great day.